Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. Person. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jayla Carter, Spike. They shit on you. They shit on you. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, with Joe Boo is uh, I'm, I'm I'm messing up this morning, boy. Joe Boo's not here. Joe Boo's at the Red Brick House, but we got Joe Bear up in here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So. Let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. You know, it's crazy because um, I've been down at Red Brick House so much. You know, we've been working on that place and actually building a studio. And I'm getting comfortable with that one and stuff there. And it, it feels good being there and it feels great being here. Um, my mother-in-law broke her leg uh, before Valentine's Day, and my wife and her sister are help taking, helping to rehab her leg and things. And so that's why we've been down there uh, so much. And I'll be happy when it is healed up and I can be back home here on a regular basis. Let me say shout out to my JMU Dukes who made the NCAA beating Wisconsin in the first round. Unfortunately, they got destroyed by Duke yesterday, but making it there... I couldn't be prouder of being a JMU, uh, a former JMU Duke myself. Uh, seeing them making it to a bowl game and everything else, JMU sports has been truly elevated, and now it's a matter of the women's in the uh, the women's tournament as well. Best of luck to them as well. So we have the league owners meeting that is underway, and Jerry Jones, man. It seems like the deeper we go down the rabbit hole, the worse it seems to get. Jerry Jones holding serve at the league meetings, you know, talking about uh, everything. You know, he's saying, you know, well, you know, we believe Dak Prescott is one of a handful of quarterbacks out there that can win the Super Bowl and things. And, and if you believe that, then why are we not getting his contract done, getting some cap relief to try to elevate the team? Here's the reality that people don't want to believe, okay? What what you don't want to believe is that the Cowboys are still going to be a good team this year. I know that sounds crazy because you always, we always go through the same thing every single year. I describe it as a pendulum. And on one side of the pendulum swing, you could have a team like the Commanders that throughout the the free agency history have always been one of those teams that have spent way too much money in free agency reaching for guys and had some of the biggest bust in the history of free agency. They signed prime time past his prime. They brought in miles Austin who literally stole money. They had guys like Adam Archuleta, you know, safety from the bears and overpaid him. They had Albert Hainsworth, you could go down the list of all these players that during the offseason they say, oh my God, be scared of the commanders. They are going to be really good. Then on the other side of the pendulum, we have the Dallas Cowboys that don't spend in free agency. At least not premier ones. They still go into free agency, but they never are going to be in those first that first whole wave. The league year begins and everybody's grabbing all their shiny new expensive pieces and stuff. The Cowboys are all the way over here. Now, what really needs to happen is you have to understand about free agency is you can't build a team solely with free agents. You can look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. When they ended up winning the Super Bowl, they had a base of a good team. They had a really good defense. Their problem, they were 8-8, eight and eight, was Jameis Winston threw 30 TD passes and 30 interceptions. 30 for 30. Shout out to Michael Anthony Fitness. I'm so happy that he's going to be working with me because that's been a while. 30 for 30. 
when you throw 30 interceptions, it hurts your team. If Jameis Winston just didn't throw 30 interceptions, let's say he only threw 15, they probably would have been a playoff team. You bring in one of the best quarterbacks in the history of football. You bring in, you know, players like Namak and Sue. You bring in a Gronk. You've added great talent to the roster of the basis of a good team. When you look at the Rams, they went out and they got Matthew Stafford. You know, they got Jalen Ramsey, you know, when they already had guys like Aaron Donald. They already had the basis of a really great team. They topped it off with free agency. That's where the Cowboys have been year after year. Don't kid yourself and think that winning 12 games is nothing. The fact that we have won 12 games in a row three years straight as opposed to 5-11 and 11 or 8-8, eight and eight, sorry, that's hard to do they need is they need to top it off and here lies the problem the cowboys pendulum is over here stuck on we believe in our guys we believe we can find undrafted rookie free agents we believe that our draft is enough to get us there and the thing is is you're close but when it comes to playoffs you need just a little bit more so if the pendulum were to just swing for the Cowboys just a little bit more, just to get a couple extra players to fill in those holes. You'd be okay. Now, here's what I want to say is because when you think about the Cowboys offense, okay, the Cowboys offense, people will say, oh, well, you know, Tony Pollard had 1,000 yards, so he had a great season. 1,000 yards doesn't mean the same thing it did back in Jim Brown's day. You got more games. Tony Pollard had 1,000 yards in 15 games. That comes out to 66 yards a game. He had one game of 100 yards all season. He averaged four yards a carry. That's not outstanding. When you think about Emmett Smith in the playoffs, Emmett Smith behind that offensive line where he's averaging 4.8, 5.2 you know, yards a game in the playoffs, there's a big difference of averaging like 2.6. There just is. I don't know how else to put it to you guys. If you did not have Emmett Smith, the all-time leading rusher there with Troy Aikman, you're not winning those Super Bowls. You're not winning those Super Bowls. Don't kid yourself. When the game was on the line... I don't care, Emmett. you got a separated shoulder, tape that shit up and get out there. They just did. So you have Jerry Jones saying that the Cowboys didn't have enough money in order to pay Tyron Smith the bonuses. And this is not the first time we've heard those kinds of statements. We've heard that before about Amari Cooper and, you know, Lyle Collins and things like that. That's just the way they are. They are really good at drafting. They're really good at finding undrafted rookie free agents and being able to plug them in. The problem is we're so top heavy with these contracts that you don't have that extra money to go ahead and fill in. Now, here's the reality. Losing Tony Pollard, yeah, that's not good. But that production can be replaceable. On the offense, you lost Tyron Smith, but Tyron Smith, over the four, last four years, has only averaged seven and a half games per season. And you lost Biotish, a guy who most of us look at and don't say he's an elite center. So we're talking about three spots. You look at Fergalicious. Ferguson is becoming a really good, maybe elite tight end. You got CeeDee Lamb, who, if we can get him to stop checking out, is one of the top wide receivers in football. You got Brandon Cooks, who in the second year in this system and with the Cowboys should flourish. You end up getting rid of some dead weight with Michael Gallup, and you give a guy like Jalen Tolbert an opportunity to step up. You've got Tyler Smith, who took a major leap, who can move out to tackle. You've got Zach Martin, who is still one of the best guards in football. And you have Terrence Steele, who should be able to return to where he was before the knee injury, having another year. 
if the Cowboys have the similar luck that they have and draft an offensive lineman in the first round, you can look at Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, Mozzie, excuse me, Tyler. We've got too many damn Smiths. That's four complete hits right there. Four. If I'm the Cowboys, I'm saying the one thing we've been good at is drafting offensive linemen in the first round. Let's do that because if you can get another stud on the offensive line, be it center or guard, and move Tyler out to tackle, that offensive line is really good. And you have some young guys that you look at and say might not be so bad. So that offense, that without a running game, and if you draft a running back, young guy that's got some, you know, pick up some get up and you get the offensive line to get that offense is going to be really good it's going to be really good on your defense you had a fantastic back end you're going to get a boost on this defense because of getting digs back and overshone back we already have word that mozzie smith is now back over 300 pounds and maybe with mike zimmer working with him I don't know if there's a dynamic with Dan Quinn. That he, you know, he looked at him and said, you know, the fat boys ain't back. Well, with Mike Zimmer, the fat boys are back. <laughs> okay, the fat boys are back. He's putting weight back on. And you have some guys that have the opportunity to step into the void. It's not that we're having guys that have never played. We now actually have guys that have played but have been in rotation that don't get enough playing time. You got a D-Law who is really good at stopping the run, one of the best edge rushing run stoppers. You got a Phenom in Micah Parsons. You get a Sam Williams in the rotation that now gets more. You get a Goldston that gets more in the rotation. You're a couple of players away on the defensive line. That's where you need to help. Your secondary is really good. Your linebacking core improved with Eric Kendricks. So all of the doom and listening to people who are saying that the Cowboys, you know, are going to be the worst team in the division, you're not really recognizing and looking at the whole picture here. The Cowboys have some really great players. Is it enough to win the Super Bowl? I don't think so. And that's where Jerry Jones, you know, going down the rabbit hole, you know, I've been the GM here for a long time. And, you know, I'm not mad about that Zeke Elliott contract that we made and stuff, but I've learned from it. And that's why I should be the GM, because I won't be making that mistake like that again. You did with Michael Gallup. You did. And you're waiting still on getting Dak Prescott's done where you have an opportunity to try and make some other moves to try and support him. Yes, I believe Dak Prescott can win a Super Bowl, but he can't do it alone. And that's the bottom line. You have to have a team around him. Pat Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. But Pat Mahomes... Without that defense doing what it did in the playoffs, without Pacheco running the way he did, they're not winning that Super Bowl this year. They're just not. Don't kid yourself and think it was only Pat Mahomes. And that's the reality of it. You got to have a defense that can get you a stop when you need it or get you the ball. You got to have sometimes a running back that can pick up some yardage in the playoffs to keep those drives going and get teams out of nickel coverage, force them to put eight in the box from time to time, keep them off their, off their heels, or excuse me, keep them off their toes and get them on their heels to make plays. So before I hit the road here and get on to work, let's listen into the joke that is Jerry Jones saying that Dak Prescott could lead the Cowboys to a Super Bowl. NFL owners meetings are underway in Orlando, Florida. And every single year, the coaches have the big breakfast where they meet with the media and they're going to do that today. But yesterday, 
Jerry Jones uh, spoke to a couple of reporters. Now, the first thing here is that there was a picture that went out of Jerry Jones, okay? Mm -hmm. Speaking to reporters, and he had like a regular notebook in front of him, yes. right? So the notebook is, what is this called? The one that I have, like a letter. legal pad. Legal pad, thank you. So normally, on, normally people use the yellow legal pads for those listening, Evans is white. You think normally people use the yellow legal pad? Everyone uses the yellow legal pad. <laughs> Really? Mine is yellow. Oh, I think more people use the white legal pad than the yellow. No. Nuno, you're a big ledger guy. Are you a white? Are you a, are you a white? Ledger guy. The, the only, legal pad this is what we're talking about. Pad kind of guy. It's whatever's in our supply closet, and they're usually the white ones. Yeah. Well, where do you think I got these from the last time I was in Bristol? Nuno's like, if it's free, it's me. Yeah, Justin, our boss, literally walked me <sighs> okay. over. He said, here, the mother load. And I was like, oh, my God, tons of legal pads. I got this from the supply closet as well. There were yellow options. Okay. I can't believe you went with the white option over yellow. I like the white legal pad better. Mm. Anyway, so Jerry Jones. Jerry jo What? <laughs> you say says a lot? What does it say about me? I don't know. Okay, good. You're just Are plain. Vanilla. Yeah, exactly. That, there you go. I'm vanilla, baby? Yeah, That's you're vanilla, you're baby. You okay. need a little spice in your life, Evan. Get the yellow legal pad the next right, time. My bad. Switch it up. Anyway, so, um, so Jerry Jones had this legal pad when they're taking pictures of him. Uh, <laughs> And it was just scribble scrabble all over. It was it. a doodle. It was a complete and utter doodle that was out there. We're it's showing like, it on his And it's a white legal pad. It's a doodle. I have no idea what he's actually writing. He that's has a, the legal saying pad. Saying that's a doodle is a disservice to doodles. Actually, that's just you're right. scribbles. You're right. It is just a scribble. It's I should because doodle usually implies like a flower or some sort of face or a house or one of those fire S's that you used to make back in the day. You know what I'm talking about? No, but the ha the house Oh, you don't know the S I'm talking about? The We're house thing, I, I think I always would do. That's Let's the only I drawing I could make. Or not the house, like a square. Like, um, I <laughs> try to show it on, on the oh, camera. I it up. This is the only thing I was able to make. Oh, the cube? The cube. So that's I, that's I my version it up, of it. But this is Can we get on to Oh, I could never. <laughs> like the these? Syracuse? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. I could never do that. That's what, that's what I would consider to be a doodle. Oh, I, so wait, the, the difference between a doodle and a scribble, just so we understand here? What Jerry Jones did on the legal pad, Pat is right. That's more of a scribble than a doodle. Because so, it was just kind of like him circling a, a pen on paper. There was no shape behind it. So doodle has to have some sort of end result of something. Even yeah. if it's not it's a, Picasso. It's a picture. Okay, it's a picture or my cube is a doodle. Yes. Scribbling is just... Nothing, I guess, what Jerry Jones had? Yeah, I don't know why he had the paper and the pen <laughs> if he was just going to write in circles. It Nervous really habit? Like, ner like, I don't know. That's It was so odd looking. Anyway, so he goes and he speaks to the media yesterday and he says, quote, I think there are a handful or more of quarterbacks playing who haven't won a Super Bowl that will win a Super Bowl. I think Dak is one of them. I'm firm there. He's one of the ones who can, end quote. Well, I... I mean, just throwing this out there. If you own a football team and you have a quarterback who you believe can win a Super Bowl mm -hmm. and he hasn't yet, but you think he will, wouldn't you want him on your team past this year? And to say, I'm firm there. He's one of the ones who can. That's pretty effusive and pointed praise for your quarterback that you have had the opportunity to have a new contract for, yet you have not done so yet. If this is, if he is trying to negotiate against Dak, saying things like this publicly doesn't help his case. No, it doesn't. When you get in the negotiating room, if you were Dak Prescott and his representatives, I would just hold up this quote. You're firm in your <laughs> position that I can win a Super Bowl. So meet my asking price. Maybe he's not firm he can win a Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> But if you think that you are in currently in possession of a quarterback, or a quarterback is in your employ, I should say. Right. And that quarterback can win a Super Bowl. If you are that firm mm -hmm. in your belief in this person, mm -hmm. why would you ever let him leave, leave your building? Why would you ever say this? Why would you? I mean, you're going to come out there if you're Jerry Jones and you're going to say, I believe there are some quarterbacks in the league that haven't won a Super Bowl that can win a Super Bowl. And I'm firm, as you said, Smalls, in Dak being one of them. For what team? For the Saints? In two years? For the Broncos? For the Patriots? What team are we talking about? Mm -hmm. Because if it's your team, one would think you may want him on the team. And yeah. you know that his asking price is going to be to be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL and in the history of the league. 
Why? Because he's in his prime, coming off of a great regular season for him with a head coach that he has thrived under, at least individually in the regular season of Mike McCarthy, as a pending unrestricted free agent one year from now. Mm -hmm. You you know what the price is. The price is the highest paid quarterback in the history of the sport. And if you believe he can win a Super Bowl, you also have to factor in, I believe he can win a Super Bowl being the highest paid quarterback in the history of the sport. Kyle Shanahan can come out there small and say, I believe that Brock Purdy can win a Super Bowl sure. because he has a, a year left as the lowest paid quarterback in the sport. Mm -hmm. But Brock Purdy also went to a Super Bowl. Correct. And went to an <laughs> NFC title game the yes. year before, before he got hurt. Which Jack but, Prescott has not done. Correct. And you know the circumstances in which Dak Prescott is going to approach the rest of his career as making 50, 55, 60 million dollars a year. A lot of quarterbacks do not have the ability to win the Super Bowl if they're the highest paid player in the history of the Ooh. sport. Right. Why? Because it means less for others. Dak may or may not be one of them. To date, he is not one of them. Patrick Mahomes could get paid $100 million, and I believe he could win a Super Bowl. This is just a wild comment here by da by Jerry Jones under the circumstances. Well, yeah, for someone who's such a sh shrewd businessman and usually tries to come out on top of negotiations, I would imagine that one of the sticking points for you to maybe lower the price for Dak when you get into those negotiations are that he hasn't had the playoff success. That you Okay, we're going to leave it right there. Here's the thing, uh, having seen what the Cowboys, okay, because here's where you could, if, if you're Jerry Jones, you can make the argument that, Dak, we're trying to build a winner, and we're making moves right now to get there, because if you're saying that you were all in, but then you say we didn't have the money to pay Tyron Smith, which means you're letting go another key piece for your quarterback to help keep him upright. And you're not doing anything to help him thus far. There are other ways that you can get money. Let, let's be clear about this. Beyond Dak Prescott's, you, you could restructure his, now that you've got those extra years, and grab easily $20 million more. In which case, you could go out there and sign a few more people. But beyond just that, just like you did with Zach Martin, you could do that with Diggs easily. You could do that with Terrence Steele. You could do that with a number of players and see if you're looking at Dak the way I would look at saying, hey, Dak, here's what we're trying to do, man. We're, we're trying to get over the hump. We, we got other guys that have restructured their contract. See, look, we got this player and this player to come in to help make us better. How about you give me, you, you know, you, you, ultimately, Dak, if you win a Super Bowl here with the Cowboys, you don't have to ever worry about anything, ever. And in order to do that, we're trying to build this thing. We need some of that money that you're getting paid. You think you got the endorsements now? Put that ring on that thing, man. Put that ring on there. You will be like Tony Romo on television or Troy Aikman or Moose Johnson. So here's how we can help each other. That's what would be my way of looking at this. If I'm Dak and I keep seeing every single year, I'm losing people, but not replacing them, not looking, you know, as I see when I look over in Philadelphia and I see Jalen Hurts and they say, you know, we, we, we drafted busted wide receiver. So let's go out and get a guy that's proven in A.J. Brown. You know what I'm saying? You know, other teams that look and say, let's go out and get ourselves a running back. You know, Baltimore, yeah, we got, you know, Lamar Jackson and everything else. Let's go get Derrick Henry to add to the mix. Let's go get Odell Beckham Jr. And, and so you look at this and say, why am I giving you a break? Why, 